started. Oh, okay. I'll try and catch up. <clears throat> that all day long. But now you can <laughs> say that. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh. Oh, you Good hit morning. The... Hit the what? Recording. The record. I did. It was right oh. in the middle of you shouldn't be okay. singing, Martian. <laughs> Uh, Anita's got the Elvis look going this morning and I'm your it. flower child. Oh yeah. Elvis <laughs> is in the house. Okay. Good or morning, not. everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Feng Shui Friday with uh, Anita and Cheryl. Yay. 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 Cheryl, Anita. Yeah. You know, the two of us, the two of us. Look at us go. The mm -hmm. AWC. <gasps> AWC. Oh yeah, we're oh yeah, we're gonna have a link in the thing right later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the AWC. Yeah. Oh, we've got so much to share with you today. But first, mm -hmm. I'll get a card and I'll let you know. I'll let uh, Elvis here entertain you for a minute. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, Ooh. so I had um, two pull out, two fly out. I should say. Oh, of course, two. Of course. Two out. Mm -hmm. Well, this is interesting considering that we have a decluttering program coming up starting this week. <clears throat> of course. Yeah. Because so there's the card deck. Yes. Wow. And you'll start seeing this image consistently. Let's just say. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another new secret. Ah, love it. Yeah. So two cards, number 16 cards. and number 17. 17 and what? 16. 16 and 17. Correct. Number hmm. 16 is the symbols of welcome. Okay. And number 17 is the foyer. The foyer. So we have talked about symbols of welcome before. Yes, we have. Um, but what I wanted to touch on is as people are going through the decluttering process. Hmm. Keep in mind symbols that could be used as welcome, because quite mm -hmm. often when Anita and I help clients, we go shopping in their house. Yes, we do. There's all kinds of treasures there. So you may come across something that would be the perfect welcome symbol, especially with spring and now flowers and everything outside. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you could have the perfect little statue that maybe doesn't suit another room anymore. That'd yeah. be a great chi welcome. Okay. So enough about the symbols of welcome. Well, and you know, um, symbols of welcome really, Cheryl, could be for any room, mm -hmm. right? True. So, you know, we don't always have to equate that to the front entrance of the home. Um, it's like what welcomes you into your uh, sacred space of your bedroom? Mm -hmm. What welcomes you in to uh, your office or Good your point. yoga room or your fitness room or something like that. Good right? point. Kitchen. And again, you know, we always want to make sure that we're feeling, you know, how do we feel in that space? Mm -hmm. Right. And so it might be that you just got to shift something. And again, like you said, shopping in your own home, um, you know, a great place for this that uh, people forget about is the laundry room, mm -hmm. right? So the laundry room, you know, that's the chore place. And, you know, it's like, oh, so many people, you know, I don't really know anybody that loves doing laundry. And so why not have something that uplifts you, that makes you feel good in your laundry room? Great. You know, some symbol of welcome yeah. that says, hey, come on in, you know, look at this bright, beautiful picture or, uh, you know, something that makes you feel good when you're in that space. And sometimes it can just be a little plant or you know again something really really simple yes this is true and when you said the laundry room that reminded me of a, a symbol of welcome when you're coming home too because so many people pull into the garage and they're mm -hmm. welcomed by the bag of garbage piles they're welcomed of by you know piles or boxes stacked up or they're welcomed by whatever the case may be that may not be so welcoming right yeah cool all right well then let's yeah. move on to the 17 which is the foyer mm. all right and what does that look like i know actually i i, I know actually people i do actually know people 
<laughs> you know some people with foyers? I do. <laughs> and I can remember every time I tell this story, and, uh, and when she watches this, she's going to know exactly who I'm talking who about. Who she is, yeah. Um, and she knows Very what Charlene. I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Is when the first time I opened up their front door and was standing with her, she was blocking me because she knew what she was blocking and she was trying to hide oh, yeah. this front closet mm -hmm. that was so full and overflowing. Literally, you could yeah. not have closed the doors if you tried. No, the doors were wide open because there was no way in hell you were closing those doors. <laughs> So, of course, things shifted in her life, and that yeah. maintains itself pretty good now, but she would avoid using the front door. The, so her foyer yeah. was so congested, it was far from welcoming, we'll just say. Yeah. So. Um, well, and again, you know, that's that first space. That's the, that's the, um, the decompression zone, I call it, right? So uh, whatever has been going on in the outside world, and then you come home and then, you know, in that foyer, that's where you get to ah, decompress, you know, yeah. take off your bra if you want and throw it over there <laughs> on the chair. Um, you know, those high heel shoes oh. that crinched you all day or whatever, Drove you right? crazy. It's kind of that decompression space. And interesting uh, if you look at all big box stores, okay, okay, when sorry. you go into uh, any big box store, yes, be it Walmart or Canadian Tire or, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those stores, mm -hmm. when you first walk into the entrance, there's approximately, you know, eight to 10 feet or more really? when you first walk into their foyer that is free. That it's, you know, they're not bombarding you the moment you walk in the door. They're giving you a little bit of space for you to decompress and kind of think about why you're there. Mm -hmm. So isn't that interesting that they know the psychology of that? And yet in our own homes, uh, you know, as soon as we walk into that space, it, it could be like, buh, 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 buh. you know, like you don't like to be bombarded when you go into a store and have somebody say, oh, okay, hi, can I help you? As soon as you walk in, you go like, uh, yeah, Back off. feng shui, you know, <laughs> <laughs> from you, like, I'm just like, give me a minute here. Like, hello, you know, I just got a screaming baby in the yeah. car or whatever, you know? So same, same thing at home. It's like, <sighs> let's have some decompression. I don't but know. Sometimes. So, and let's talk about that. The big box store has the square footage to do that. Uh, yeah. Lots of people oh, yeah. don't have that space in their front entrance. They could be in an apartment for, for an example, right? Yes. Or a condo. And as soon as you step in, I mean, five feet of real estate <laughs> can be a lot of yeah. real estate for some people. So what is the easiest way to create that transitional flow in a smaller space, in your opinion? Well, you know, again, it, it could be where, you know, our, our eye goes is where our attention flows. So it might be uh, sometimes, you know, in feng shui, we recommend putting a mirror in the foyer. Mm -hmm. to expand the space, to make it feel bigger. Uh, sometimes it could be color that we're looking at to expand the space. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, we always have to think about comfort and safety. We want to make sure that people feel comfortable and safe when they are first, you know, into that space. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's putting a, um, a storage bench, right, for extra storage, but yet you still have a place that somebody can put their, you know, sit down and take off their shoes or put on their shoes mm -hmm. or uh, something like that. So, you know, again, you know, every space is obviously individual and there's, you know, definitely things we can do, mm -hmm. but just be, you know, aware. I guess the biggest thing is, you know, keeping your feng shui eyes on exactly. to be aware, consciously aware of how you feel. And that is how someone else is going to feel when they come into that space. It's interesting um, to take a different perspective of it, right? Yeah. To look at it as if energy would flow. Mm -hmm. in the yeah. Space. And, and again, it could be, oh, okay, well, you know, if, if the, 
if water was flowing into my house, where would it flow? Mm -hmm. Right? Where would it direct people? Um, and, and sometimes like I know our previous home, you know, we had a very small foyer and we had stairs going up mm -hmm. and stairs going, going down. down. And you that's that quite typical, yes. right? That's quite typical. And so, you know, when you, when you want people to come in to that foyer, to that space, you know, do you want them to look down the stairs or do you want them to go up the stairs? And I think we talked about this before in our stair, uh, you know, pod thing. Um, <laughs> but again, it's, you know, where, where do we want to direct the attention? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I don't want people to go downstairs. I want them to come upstairs because that's where the coffee is and the wine and the fun, right? right. <laughs> so how do I direct them to go up my stairs? Right. And it might be just, again, it's a, it could be a simple little placement of a picture. It could be a simple placement of a plant. It could be a simple placement of a welcome mat. Uh, again, just to set, you know, it's subtle, those subtle influences mm -hmm. to tell people, ah, oh, go this way for sure and here. that directional art want you to do. yeah that directional art would be yeah. a great a great piece right so if you've got uh, a picture of birds and they're flying you know the direction of the birds flying up the stairs takes their energy up the stairs yeah but exactly. the direction of the birds flying down the stairs is going to take their energy down the stairs um, I think super important, like you just mentioned, because quite often, and that's very typical in the split levels, right? Coming in and you've got the entrance, we're right at the front. Having it mm -hmm. open, like trying to avoid clutter there. I've, I've been in a space where they actually had a boot rack behind the door, so you couldn't open the door fully. So you were literally coming in and the energy was forced to go down the stairs, because you mm -hmm. couldn't open the door fully to be graded to go up the stairs. So there's little things, like you said, every place is different, but allowing the space to be as open as possible. Yeah. And again, you know, in feng shui too, share, we always look at the results, mm -hmm. you know, what are the results that you're experiencing? And um, so again, pay attention to how, how people's energy are that come into your home, whether they're, they live there or not. Um, you know, do they, are they apologizing because they have to, you know, squishy over or, you know, just pay attention to what the results are. And again, sometimes it's just simple, simple little adjustments mm -hmm. that can just make you feel better in that space. Totally. Um, the other thing I want to say about foyers too, is that um, I know in our foyer, and I was actually thinking about this the other day, um, I have a, a little landing table, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a little dish there that we throw our keys in so that you always know where the keys are, right? It's consistent. <laughs> throw the keys in there. They're always Habit. there. Uh, but I was thinking the other day, I'm going to actually take my abundance bowl and stick it on that table mm -hmm. um, in the foyer. So and, you know, we'll talk about that some other time too, but anyways, that was just something, cool. you know, again, cause I don't want it to be stagnant. No. I want it to, you know, I want the energy to shift with the seasons. I mean, it, mother nature isn't stagnant out there. I mean, gosh, look at all the beautiful blooms and <sighs> all of those things that weren't there a week ago. Yeah. Right? The so, trees are just popping in our it neighborhood. Up. Yeah. Freshen, freshen it up. up. Let's change it up. So even those up. that like to change up their decor seasonally, right? Yeah. Something else is inviting, something else is greeting the chi. And if it, if it makes you happy, yep. that's, Whatever that's feels good. really the bottom line. If it right? feels good, it's good feng shui. Exactly. So if, okay, what are we talking about numbers now number today? Eight, one and seven. Okay. So there was a one and a six. There was a, a one, one and a six. And a one and a seven. And a one and a seven. What if we add them all up? What do we get? Ah, uh, we've got an eight and seven, a seven and an eight. So 15, which is a six, which is a six. Okay. Well, I like, which that. is actually That's... quite funny because if you do them individually, 16 is seven, 17 is eight and together they're six. So it's six, seven and eight. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Oh, so that's like, okay, we got to have some steps, right? Got to have step six, seven, eight. So yeah, take some baby steps and see what happens. And then at the end of the day, when you add those all up, because in numerology, I don't know if you're familiar with numerology or if you've ever had your, um, your own numerology done, um, everything goes from one to nine. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that's it, right? So when we have multiple numbers, like a one and a six, we always take and add those numbers together so that it reduces. So in numerology, they're always looking at the numbers, you know, up to number nine. Um, and then so, it depends if they're double or triple digit. Right. And so that's why we add them up together. Yep. And having a number six is all about harmony, harmony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. And, and it really balance. is. So I was I was thinking yesterday and some of you might have seen on my uh, personal page, I did a video because we're doing this 21 day decluttering challenge coming up starting June 1st. And I thought many people think of it and think, oh, I got to do my whole house. And yeah. and that's not the case. When we think of doing our whole house, it becomes instantly overwhelming and we go stop. I'm not doing this. So bite-sized pieces, the steps that yeah. Anita just referred to, I have different areas I'm going to work on. And then this morning in my meditation, I realized really it can be 21 little projects Ooh, over the like 21 that. days. Mm -hmm. And the end result after those 21 days is going to be phenomenal. Yes. Like you want to talk about changes, right? So in yes. my video yesterday, I showed the, uh, I have a, a, a big drawer full of recipe books. Oh, and it was so messy and cluttered. <laughs> but that wasn't the point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the point is it's full of stuff I no longer use. Mm -hmm. That no longer serves you. No longer serves me. Yeah. Everything is available on here. Right? Yeah. So um, yeah. same with the photo albums and, and a person commented on my page, well, what are you going to do with the pictures? Well, if somebody wants them, that's in them, they're welcome to them. And if not, they're gone. Yeah. Right? Bless them, release them. It was a great time, but Rod doesn't know who the people are. The kids don't know who the hell the people are, right? This is from yep. the eighties. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's old energy. Great yeah. memories, but I still have the memories without the